Well, <laughs> welcome. Um, sorry, this is coming out so late. I uh, just didn't get things done before uh, before we had to go to church, and then anyway, here we are. So um, I was about to tape a tape it earlier, and then Benjamin took a shower, and he sings in the shower, so it would have been it would have been a little bit awkward. So anyway, here we are. Um, so just a little bit more on bounded linear maps and um, Banach's uh, fixed point theorem. Um, section 1.4 and 1.5 in the textbook, right? And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, textbook as usual is this one, right? Um, and um, I may also say something about section 5.1. Um, not the whole thing, but anyway. All right, so let me just get into it. Last time we um, introduced uh, bounded linear operator, like so, right? And we proved that bounded linear maps are continuous and continuous maps are bounded. We introduced the set of bounded linear maps from one normal linear space to another, and um, we proved it is itself a normed linear space, and the norm is given by um, looking at the supremum of the values of the, um, the bounded linear map on the unit, the unit ball um, in the space. Sometimes called the operator norm, right? And um, we also proved that if E1 was a normal linear space and E2 was a Banach space, then the set of bounded linear maps from E1 to E2 is itself a Banach space, all right? And let's see, there's just a couple theorems that remain uh, in section 1.4. And so let me just kind of put them in front of us here. So those theorems are, Um, yeah, so uh, let me zoom in here. All right, so first of all, theorem 1.5.10, um, if L is a continuous linear mapping from a subspace E1 into a Banach space E2, then L has a unique extension to a continuous linear map on the closure. Um, and if the um, domain of the linear map is dense in E1, then in fact there exists a unique continuous linear extension from the domain to the whole, um, whole of the normal linear space E1. Um, so that's a nice little theorem, and we'll, I'll, I'll try to prove that here in a minute or two. Um, and then the theorem after that is that um, if you have a linear map from E1 to E2, it's continuous, um, then the null space is a closed subspace, and um, if the domain is closed, then the graph is a closed subspace of the Cartesian product E1 and E2. And then um, at the end of the section, right, there is um, this result, which is called the, um, oops, my bad, let me get this on the level, the um, Banach -Stein Steinhaus theorem. Um, which is also known as the uniform boundedness principle. And it says that if you have a family of bounded linear maps from a Banach space X to a normed space Y, remember Banach means complete normed linear space, all right? Um, then if every X and if for every X and X, big X, there exists an M sub X for which the, um, the values of the norm um, of t of x, right, is less than or equal to that m sub x, and that's true for all operators in the family, all right, then there exists a constant m, positive, you know, greater than zero, such that the um, operator norm of t is less than or equal to m for all t in the family of bounded linear maps. And so this is, again, known as the uniform boundedness principle. Now, there's an argument given in section um, 1.4 that I don't, I don't think I'm going to go over, um, where he, uses, he introduces this uh, diagonalization, um, uh, diagonalization theorem. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the relevant text in the... In the text. He says, you know, the last theorem is the banach steinhaus theorem, you know, known as the uniform boundedness principle. Um, Hugo 
Steinhaus, 1887-1972. This is the most, one of the most important theorems in the theory of norm spaces. And the standard proof of the theorem is based on topological argument known as the Bayer category theorem. Um, for instance, see Kreisig or um, Bayer. Anyway, so he's going to present, they say in this book, they present a proof based on the diagonal theorem. And this is um, first introduced by Jan uh, Makun, Maku, I can't talk today, Makuzinski um, in 1970, and then later used by these people. And he um, says it's simple, and uh, I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But any theorem that starts by talking about an infinite matrix of elements, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's simple, but um, it. I'm sure it's simple once you understand it. I um, I just don't uh, I don't feel inclined to cover it for you guys, and um, it is interesting nonetheless. The result is more interesting than the than the proof in my in my estimation at the moment. I think it's worth like looking through the proof, um, but. Um, and then I was, I was actually going to, you know, go a different way and show you the proof from the bare category theorem. Um, but um, <laughs> when I looked at Moncrees, it's a homework exercise. And it's framed in terms of metric spaces, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, just, I wanted to state it. It's a kind of neat result, right? Like this uniform boundedness principle. Um, so, that, um, in fact, I, I should probably think about using it in my own research, honestly. Um, by the way, more about that later. Let's let's get into the proof of theorem 1.5.10. And um, because I want to make sure we still have time to talk about section 1.5, I don't want to take too long on this. We just have a, just a just a little snippet left here in section 1.4. So let's get let's get it done with here. Um, all right. So where was I? So theorem. We're working on theorem 1.5.10. Let me do some judicious moving of paper here. If I can get it set up just like so. All right, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right, there we go. So, um, let's see here. Ah. Sorry, I'm trying to get my stuff situated. Yeah. There we go. So, um, we find a functioning marker. This, I don't, maybe I'll find a better one. Mm. Well, maybe this purple one will work. Let's see here. All right, so, um, so we're trying to prove this theorem. If L is a continuous linear mapping from a subspace E1, all right, then we want to find a unique extension from the subspace, um, which we're calling DL for domain of L, um, to the closure. All right, so proof begins. Proof begins by picking X in the closure of um, the domain. All right, and if that's the case, then that implies that there exists a sequence, right, a sequence in in the in the, the domain, right? Such that xn goes to x, right? Of course. And um, but if this is a convergent sequence, then we know it's Cauchy, right? So convergence implies Cauchy, of course. And so we can look at um, the difference of the value of L at xm minus. Um, Hmm. Well, where is this L? <laughs> I mean, this is the given continuous linear map, right? So L of XM minus L of XN. All right. And um, he says since he says since this is a Cauchy sequence, all right. Now he hasn't he hasn't yet used that. So um, we're it's, this is going to all rest on that same inequality we did last time, all right. So this this is. Is Cauchy okay? Um, great. So remember what we did. We 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 can say that this, of course, by linearity is equal to um, L acting on the difference of 
um, the sequence XM and XN, like that. And then, by basically the definition of the operator norm, this is the operator norm of L times the product, though the, the norm of XM minus XN, right? And less than or equal to, because it's got that supremum in there, right? And then the deal is, well, that goes to zero, right? Because, X, because again, this is Cauchy. Um, and that's, of course, as M and N go to infinity. All right, so what does that tell us? Well, thus, this guy, right, is a Cauchy sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence in E2, where in, well, L is going from, um, where from, you know, E1. Goodness gracious, it's not even written in this theorem. Well, it's assumed here L is a mapping from E1 to E2, so that means that um, L of XM is um, sequence is, is, is in, in E2, right? It's a sequence in E2. And we're assuming that E2 is a Banach space, which means what? So we've got a Cauchy sequence and a Banach space, which is a complete normed linear space, right? So since this is a Cauchy sequence in, L, in E2, that means that there exists Z, let's say, in, um, in E2 such that what? such that the sequence um, of image, the, the image sequence L of XM here um, converges to Z in E2, right? And um, he says, the book says that what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to define the value of the extension um, at X, right? So you're given, oh man, son of a gun, this is not right. It's not defined on E1, that's not, I shouldn't write this, what, what should I write here? My bad, my bad. What, what, where should we say that it, the, the domain? It's the domain is the domain of L in my usual my usual language is it's it's this right, which is a subspace of E one. All right. So we're trying to extend this. We're trying to extend this to L tilde. You know, the whole the whole project of this proof is to extend to try to you know construct. L tilde from the closure of the domain of L to E2, okay? So that, that's our goal, all right? And um, so the first order of business then is going to be to say that we're going to, you know, propose that L tilde of this X that we picked, right, X in the closure, um, is going to be equal to what? Well, it's just going to be equal to Z, all right? And um, so that means, in other notation, that L tilde of the you know um, limit as um, m goes to infinity of x of n. I mean that is x, right? Is going to be defined to be the limit as m goes to infinity of you know um, L of x m. Right, which is given to be, you know, Z. Um, yeah. Now, um, does this does this suffice to um, does this suffice to define um, L tilde? Well, certainly. I mean, if it's an extension, one of the things you want is that L tilde. Like, we we should have that. Sorry, I think I'm spending entirely too long on this theorem. My, my bad, guys. Um, L tilde restricted to um, the domain of L, right? It should be equal to L. And that, that is... Um, now, I'm, I'm just... Here I'm giving you the definition, essentially, for the X in the closure. Um, oh, okay, I'm, I'm a dummy. So, of course, X in the closure includes X in the domain of L itself, right? So... Um, uh, let's see here. For instance, um, if we've just got a point in the domain of L, then we can take the constant sequence, and um, I think that will just collapse back to um, L again. Okay, anyway. Um, let's see here. Where was I? 
He says, this definition will be correct only if we can show that the limit z is the same for all sequence convergence, all sequences in DL convergent to x. All right. So, okay, so the, the issue then is we've defined the, the value of L tilde using this, this sequence, but how do we know that if we had a different sequence converging, um, converging to x, that you wouldn't get a, a different value for L tilde of x, right? Because there could be more than one sequence um, which converges to x, right? So let's consider another sequence which converges to x, right? So he says yn, also converging to x, right? Then um, if we look at it, I may be off the, I think I'm off the page now, my bad. Scooch up in a bit here, sorry about that. Then if we look at it, I guess I'll go back to purple. If we look at it, L of um, yn would be L of yn um, minus L of xn. So we add zero as usual, right? Man, I feel like I feel like this is almost exactly what we did last class for something else, right? But um, anyway, so that's L of yn minus xn plus L of xn. And um, well, this um, this goes to what? This goes to L of zero, um, you know, plus plus z, um, as n goes to infinity, because of course, and, and this is equal to zero, right? I wrote an arrow, but I mean it's equal to zero, because if, if, if yn goes to x, then yn minus xn goes to x minus x, which is of course equal to zero, right? And then the linear transformation of zero is zero, and so we see that L of yn also converges to z, which means that our definition of L tilde is independent of our choice of sequence, which is good. And then he says, you can argue that L tilde is, he says clearly L tilde is a linear mapping. Um, and I, I think that's, he says that's because, um, um, he argues it's because L tilde of X is equal to L of X whenever X is in the domain of L. Says it's clear, I'll write that down, it is clear. L tilde is linear since um, L tilde of X is equal to L of X for X in the domain of L. All right. And then, um, I, I think that's a reasonable thing because if you sort through like test linearity of L tilde, you'll be looking at like L tilde of sums of things, right? But since everything in the closure can be written as the limit of a sequence of things in that in, in the domain of L, um, and the you know and, and, and you're defining the um, the value of L tilde in terms of you know basically bringing the limit out, since you have linearity of these things, it follows you're going to have linearity of L tilde. So I, I actually I actually think despite the the use of the, the suspicious word clearly, I think it, I think it's actually a legitimate claim here. Um, he says it remains to show that L tilde is continuous, and so he's going to show it's continuous by showing it's bounded. So if you let, um, let's see here, you know, x be in the closure um, of the domain of L, and um, let's let it be in the unit ball, um, I mean the unit sphere, norm, norm of x is 1, then what? There exists a sequence, right? X1, X2, dot, 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 in the domain of L, with, of course, Xn going to X, right? And the norm of X equals to 1, of course, right? Fine. And um, hence, the norm of Xn, that's supposed to be an N is also going to 1, right, the norm of x, which is, by the way, equal to 1. All right. And so if we look at the norm 
of L tilde of X that's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity um, of the norm of L of xn. Now what we're using right there, how do we pass the limit outside the norm? What did we prove last time? We proved the norm is continuous, right? So we're using continuity of the norm right there to pass the limit outside. Um, and so then that's less than or equal to the norm of L, I believe. Um, because the Oh, that's again resting back on the inequality for the um, that, that relates to the operator norm and the, um, the 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 norm of the thing inside. But the norm of well, I mean, I, I guess to be fussy, this would be less than or equal to the norm of L times the norm of X n. But then in the limit, that becomes one, which gives you this estimate, right? So therefore, L tilde is bounded um, and hence continuous, right? All right. So I'm going to just um, I'm going to stop this video right here, and I'm going to pick it up again um, on the issue of the fixed fixed point theorem because I need to get some tea. My voice is going all haywire. So, thanks, guys.